Hey guys, what's happening? John and 9AMI with Wavelength Radio. Today, I've got a little little something something that came in from my friend Bill. Let me lift this up and show it to you. A Swan 350, original 350. And uh, you just don't go and plug it right in unless Bill would have said, hey, uh, I got this real nice uh, radio that's plug and play, have at it. Bill didn't say that. <laughs> uh, Bill said, uh, I don't want this piece of junk, get it out of here, uh, send me 25 bucks for shipping and uh, it's yours. <laughs> So that's the story on this one. It is pretty clean. Uh, you'll see, I'll go through it with you and I'll tell you exactly what I do when I get one of these type of uh, rigs in that you don't have any history on, you don't know if it's working or not. Uh, Bill did say he did fire it up. Naughty, naughty Bill, but that's okay. And uh, do the smoke test. Didn't smoke, uh, received on 40 meters. Uh, he did mention that... Um, the dial lamp has been removed for some reason, who knows, and um, the wiring looks all good and original. We'll go through that and look at it, and uh, I might need a pair of pliers to move the band switch, so we'll see how that feels, and uh, I'll let you know, uh, and I'll tell you how you should go about playing with one of these vintage radios that you just picked up for dirt cheap and uh, do not plug it in. That's the first rule number one. Do not run home and plug in one of these radios that you have no history on that it, if it works or not, especially when you open it up and you see there's original capacitors from 19, what, 60 in it. So don't do that. If you want a smoke show, you'll probably get a smoke show and cause all kinds of other damage. So we'll have at it, and uh, I'll take you step-by-step step on how I do this, and let's see what we can do with this thing, see if it fires up. Swan 350. A lot of you have owned them back in the day. A lot of you, that was your new rig. Well, this is a new one to me. This is the straight 350. Um, everything's there tubes, the whole shebang. I took the covers off uh, because, uh, you know, that's what you got to do. Okay. Have you, give you a little look around in there. Uh, this will be replaced. Uh, probably, we'll just do it underneath, see what goes on. This is where your finals are, your two uh, sweep tube finals, uh, 12 AX7, 7350, yeah, if I have to replace that, we're talking, I don't know, I think they're 40 bucks, so hopefully not. So what, what I do is kind of just assess the rig, you know, what it looks like, what do I need to dig into right away, and as you can see... Uh, you're checking all controls for how they feel. VFO feels nice and smooth. Uh, he did say the band switch was a little tough. But I can't switch it. So it just might need uh, a little grease. We'll go through it that way. Everything else seems uh, seems pretty good. It has been turned on uh, just before it came to me, but um, just on receive. I'm not going to do that. So, uh, you know, again, you're assessing everything. I'll be taking all these off and cleaning them. We'll uh, check, see what the VFO looks like, and if it needs a little grease, put a little in there. But it does feel pretty good, but we're going to look. Essentially, you're pulling off all covers, uh, checking all tubes. I'll get to that. I'm not going to show you how to check tubes. And the business end here. 
And as you can see, let me grab something I can point with. Uh, we've got a couple, uh, some old caps in here. And I'm going to replace those. Uh, I already have some pulled. Um, that's an 80 at 150. That is a 10 at 150. So we'll pro I'll, I have a 100 at at 400 that I'm going to put in there and uh, whatever else I got. I think I won the match that. This is an odd ball. This is not a um, electrolytic, but this is a uh, 0 0.005 microfarad at 1600. Well, your, a lot of swans have those. I'm going to do a checker on that and see what it shows because I don't know if I have one of those around. Uh, but it's at it's a 20 percent it says 20 percent so it doesn't have to be exact but the voltage rating is the thing that i might not have around so if we got to get another one we'll get another one but we'll see where it's at um one of the uh, relays push talk relay seems okay i don't see really any modifications that's kind of what you're looking for is any kind of crazy mods and uh, I don't see anything like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Possibly that was changed at some point. I don't know. Uh, but the connector looks good. The uh, box unit looks good. Everything looks It's pretty clean. It's pretty clean for the most part. And I don't know if these are replacements if they're, or they're original. But uh, I'll use my uh, checker on them and see what they show. Ceramic caps, you don't got to worry about those. Here's a small black beauty that I'll replace. I do have that in stock. This is the only one I'm kind of concerned with right here uh, because I don't have that, but I might need to get something to order that sucker up. But everything looks pretty clean on it. So... Um, I do know he turned it on 40 meters and received on 40 meters, but I think that's about it. And, uh, oh, that's kind of hanging out a bit there, that tube. Sorry about that, guys. I guess I need to look at the camera and not at the radio, but looks really clean on that. That looks real clean. So, I'm not going to mess with anything except... I replace the caps that I need to replace. Uh, it's missing a dial lamp right here, I see. And a key thing, huh, it does have this one. Um, maybe I'll, I'll dig something up for that. But that's not a big deal at this okay, point. Okay, so in the tube testing, uh, 12 BA6 was like 15%. So I did uh, replace that with a new one. That's 100%. Well, I don't know how new it is, but it's showing new. So uh, everything else so far is tested good. The 7360, you can't test, at least on any of my apparatus. Um, the 6GK6s, which aren't cheap, those all tested 100%. Everything else is, I would say, close to 100%. Um, I did mention earlier that this is a little tight. I can turn it, no problem. But I'm thinking that somebody really cranked down on these. I'm going to loosen them up with just a scotch. This needs to come off anyways because I want to open up the uh, the VFO and uh, take a look in there. So we'll, we'll take a quick look at it. Okay, so uh, there's the VFO cover off. Let me get you a little light in there. It actually looks pretty damn good. I got to say, it is clean. Very clean. Okay, so, uh, and there's actually some grease on it. The VFO itself uh, moves fine. I got to put this light down for a second. It's smooth. It feels, feels like it should, so I'm not super concerned with that. Okay, so let's see. Okay, that, I mean, it's just, it's tight, but it's not crazy. I'm just thinking that uh, 
the prior owner just had a weak wrist. I mean, it's, it feels positive. I'm not going to mess with it. I mean, I think it's pretty good. It, it's tighter than normal. But, I mean, honestly, um, it's not too bad. So I, I think it's just going to be a matter of, it's, we'll see what it, what it looks like. Um, do I hit that with a little deoxit uh, right there? Mm, I don't think so. I think it's fine. So I'm going to put the lid back on there. Um, I do have to add a, a bulb to this because that is missing. I think I can get something up, but we'll get the thing working first. S meter is dirty, 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 dirty. So we'll see if that even works. Hope it does. And um, we'll go from there. I'll take this off. I did take it off before, but I'm going to take it off again just for the video. And we'll take a look inside when I flip the uh, band change switch and see what we can see. Okay, well, a little bit of deoxit. And on the mechanical, a little, just a scotch of WD-40. And it seems like the band switch is better. I mean, there's still a little bit of drag on it, but it does seem to like that better. Actually, I see I need a, just a scotch here. Don't go crazy with this stuff, guys. It's not really the best thing. Okay. We'll work that a little bit. It is, uh, it is tight. I mean, I can do it with just thumb and other finger, but a lesser, lesser mortal probably couldn't. I don't, I don't like the feel of that, but it's positive, so... I'm going to show you the uh, finals box here. And we'll get everything back together. Let me get the camera set up for you here. There you go. Get a little extra light in there. So it does look clean. I mean, I don't see anything bad. Uh, and just don't go in there and hit your finger on one of these either. You want to make sure you discharge them just in case, which would entail this for safety. You're taking a, a decent sized screwdriver, touching everything, you know, liberal with it. Okay. And you're discharging before you take your, your mitts and put them in there and start, you know, jacking around with these things. Okay. Oh, that's pretty loose. Sheesh. Okay. Well, okay. I wanted to explain to you something. If you ever get a Swan 350, there's a couple variations, but this variation has this little doodad. Okay. It's a transistor with super long legs. So there's a little box on the bottom of this thing. Remove four nuts before removing the bottom cover. Okay. And I wanted to show you guys this. Here's a little box. Okay. It sits over this like so. So what, what the hell is that there for, right? Well, I'd ask that question too. A buddy of mine told me in the, in the Swan Compendium that they were having problems with these things being stable. And well, one of these engineers said, well, I got a fix for that. And I, I fixed it and it's extend these transistors legs such and such length. So they made a little board, put the transistor on it and mounted it to the bottom cover. That's why you got the little box. Well, turns out 
<laughs> it didn't do jack. Still had problems with them, so uh, there were some other fixes and things like that. So, but this one has that, so you, it's a real pain in the butt when you got to put the bottom cover on. But I just thought I'd mention that to you guys. All right, guys. Well, this is midway on the power supply for the Swan. This is a 117 XE power supply. Already replaced uh, two caps. They were originally 100 uh, microfarad at 350, and this was an 80 at 150. Uh, replaced the 80 with an 82. The 82 is a 450. No big deal. A little bit way higher than you know on the voltage rating, but it, it doesn't matter. I'm replacing the 100s with 100s, but they're going to be 450. You got to make sure the polarity is right. These are electrolytics. You notice how small they are <laughs> compared to to these other ones. Um, this is fine like this. I don't have a need. The other one is kind of way back there, the 82. There's no need to do any extending. Um, I kind of had to wait for these axials. I had radials, but I would have had extended out leads and then you're talking using heat, sh heat shrink and all that kind of stuff. So I have these three to go. This is something I had already. It was a 2000 at 25. I have a 2200 at 50 on here. I just had it. Uh, you might, some of the, uh, you know, collectors might say, well, you know. And I still got to finish soldering this on. It was just a quick tack. Uh, you should probably have a, because I had to extend this because it's a radial. See what happens when you do radials. Nobody's ever going to be in here. It's not near, I'm not touching anything. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. So it's a swan. So uh, I'll get these other three installed, and uh, I'll come back with you and show you the, show you what it looks like. Okay, well, there's the oldies. Oldie but moldy. We'll just uh, dispose of those. And, uh, boy, look at all the room we have now. Upgraded by 100 volts. And that's the setup. I see no reason to buy one of these $100 boards. Everything else is fine here. Let me uh, move this here. It's a little difficult to work on. But uh, there it is. So uh, I'm going to get this all closed up. And it's in nice shape. It's in nice shape. Get it all battened down to hatches. And uh, we'll see how it plays. Okay, and as far as recapping the 350, went over a few things already, uh, but uh, replaced the big cap. We just did it underneath. Um, there's some larger capacitance and uh, about the same voltage ratings, except for one. But anyways, they're replaced. I uh, used what I had. This is double-sided tape with one side still on it. Kind of protect things. You just uh, go underneath and uh, hook it up underneath. And you can see, you know, it's not the most beautiful job. Uh, a Collins collector might have a heart attack, but it's Swan. It's safe. I put this on here because this was a radial end, solid uh, solder two piece here. And just to protect it because it is fairly close to the to the case. It's got plenty of clearance, but I was just a little anal about that. So anyways, uh, all new caps, everything else tested. Uh, couldn't find anything else wrong. Maybe a little alignment stuff that we'll get, we'll get into. But um, power supply is all redone. And um, we're going to fire this up and uh, I'll show you what happens. Smoke or not. All right. 350's hooked up. The lid's staying off. New power supply. Caps all the way around. New caps all the way around in the 350. Let's see if we have a problem. Boy, it sounds... Sounds like it did originally. I don't like that. And it has something to do with this wiring going on back here. I pull that out a little bit. 
a Jones plug. But it did deflect right away this time. That's better. Okay. Okay. I can deal with that, I think. Uh, let's go over to an antenna that I can use. Um, plug in the... Sorry about this, I should probably have that all set up for you guys. 38.95. Okay. 50, right where it should be. Test one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Hello, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. And nine AMI testing. So, 325 watts. That's what... It's actually... I could probably get a little bit more out of that. I've seen 350, so it'll, it'll do 300 to 350. 300 is about where you probably want to run it. See what we're showing here. Should be about 200 mils. Hello, check. Hello, check. 200 mils right there. That's about where you want it. And it'll go above it a little bit on peaks. Hello, hello. And there you go. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Uh, what to do uh, with a new old radio that you got in. Cap change out. And uh, I actually threw uh, changed the caps on the power supply because, well, honestly, I just don't like having the old caps in there. Now I'm not as worried as if when I walk out of the room and leave it on. I had an SX-25 once that lit on fire. <laughs> so we definitely don't want that to happen. Um, looks like I'm getting pretty good S meter too right now. That's about where it should be, so I think I might have fixed that problem on a little bit of weak receive. Uh, but uh, I'll go into that later and check it out. But it looks like it's better because it wasn't even deflecting before. Uh, and the cap change out on this and the cap change out on this probably made a difference on the on the uh, alignment. I have not tweaked anything in the alignment on the 350. Um, I've got the uh, cute 175 that I will put above this because this has a solid top. And I'm going to put a little 4-inch fan on the back for the finals. If you have a swan or something similar with sweep tubes... It's a damn good idea to get yourself a little fan and uh, put it on. Uh, it could be 120 volts, 12 volts, whatever you want to use. You can tie it right into the into the radio, and that's probably the best way to go. So it'll probably end up being, like I said, 120 or 12 volts. Uh, and uh, you don't need anything big. Uh, this one's just going to be like a 4-inch that's going to go on the back of this to suck out air, and uh, it'll be good. Uh, so, uh, and that really saves, uh, the life of the sweep tubes because they do throw a lot of heat out and heat kills them. Um, and you don't want to be buying sweep tubes uh, left and right. They're not that cheap today. So that's it from here. There's a little DIY from, uh, N9AMI and Wavelength Radio.